In 2013, the Center for Sustainable Shale Development issued performance standards for gas extraction. A number of experts have reviewed these standards for the Delaware Riverkeeper Network and have issued a report saying the guidelines fail to protect the environment and human health. Physicist Marvin Reznikoff reviewed radiation safety issues for the report. Radium occurs naturally in Marcellus Shale. Uh, and it occurs at much higher levels than in the background. Uh, 30 to times uh, more radioactive than what you see on the surface of the Earth. Uh, maybe up to 200 times more radioactive, as uh, studies have shown by the state of New York. Um, and then all that material then would be brought to the surface of the Earth. Uh, radium, when it's ingested, when taken into a, a person's system, say it gets into waterways, uh, would concentrate in a human body and concentrate in bone and irradiate bone marrow and could lead to leukemia, increase the likelihood of leukemia. Uh, radon is a decay product of radium and radon itself uh, is an inert gas, but it's also radioactive. So that generally follows the natural gas stream. So when that goes to people's homes, uh, that would be released into a person's kitchen through the kitchen stove, for instance. Uh, so that's a great, of, of great concern. Uh, and the important point about Marcella Shale is it's closer than where people generally get natural gas from. They don't, generally one gets natural gas from Louisiana and it takes a while for it to finally come up to Pennsylvania or to Philadelphia or New York. Uh, in that time, radon will decay away. Uh, it has a short half-life of uh, less than four days, so it decays away. But in the Marcella Shale, which is much closer to New York and Philadelphia, it doesn't have time to decay away and it would be released into a person's home. That's of concern. Well, that's easy. They don't. Uh, they don't really discuss the radioactivity in it. It's sort of if you don't talk about it, it doesn't exist. You know, I have no idea why, why they didn't mention radioactivity. Uh, they know. That's how they find the Marcellus Shale horizon below the surface of the Earth. Is They send down detectors, and when the detectors see radioactivity, and also a high carbon content, they know they've hit the Marcellus Shale. So they, they know the, the radioactivity is present. The radioactivity in, in uh, shale, uh, which gets into natural gas, uh, gets into brine and produced water, the material that comes up out of wells, uh, would be released into state waterways. And CSSD says, well, when there are safe levels, uh, you know, it can be released. But the, the fact of the matter is, uh, all of the material that's brought up from the bottom, from thousands of feet down below the earth that will then be brought up to the surface of the earth and will be released. Uh, the, there really are no methods that are being used to actually remove the radioactivity at the treatment plants uh, before it's released to the environment. Uh, there are solids that are brought up, rock cuttings, uh, that are also radioactive. They're 
sent to New York State along the southern tier primarily, but those are radioactive. The pipes themselves become coated with uh, radium, and that material will also be brought you know, to, to the surface and also eventually be released unless something else happens. Uh, we know this from what's, what's been happening in Louisiana. I've been working on this since 1992, and I know that after several years of these pipes being in production, they form scale on the, on the sides of the pipes. The pipes themselves emit radioactivity like a, an X-ray machine that you can't turn off. Uh, and, you know, there's nothing in the CSSD which talks about what's going to be done with radon, which gets into people's homes, and what's going to be done with these pipes uh, that are radioactivity. And we've seen this in other, in other states uh, where pipes have been taken out of production uh, after they've been coated with this radium, uh, coated so much that they eventually have to remove the pipe uh, because it obstructs the flow. And the pipes can be extremely radioactive. 50 is just, we, we've seen uh, in Texas, uh, pipes, two thirds of the pipes have had radioactivity more than the, st the, the state considers safe. What's problematic about safe discharge is um, essentially there is no safe discharge. One has to understand this basic principle, which is in the National Academy of Science reports, and that is there's no safe level of radioactivity. Uh, the more you get, the more likely it is that you'll get cancer. Uh, for radon, it's lung cancer. For radium, it's, uh, it is uh, leukemia. Um, and safe discharge just means discharge below what the state considers safe, uh, which is not safe. It's, each amount contributes to uh, the likelihood that a person will get cancer. And if you spread it over a, long, a large number of people, then someone is going to get cancer from that. And we've done, I've done a report on radon gas itself and how many additional cancers it, it could cause uh, being released to a person's home. And, and there are a large number that increased, a large increase in uh, the number of lung cancers that will occur. They do flaring to occasionally reduce the pressure and there is that, uh, radon that's released at that point itself. It, it becomes dis dispersed when it's out in the outdoors, as opposed to where it's inside the house and, or in the person's basement. Uh, but it's still present around the drill sites and it is of concern, uh, not just to residents, but to the workers themselves. Right now, what's happening at, in metropolitan areas is natural gas is mixed with natural gas that's coming up from Louisiana. So it's diluted in essence. The radioactivity is diluted. As more gas comes from the Marcellus Shale Formation in Pennsylvania and West Virginia and Ohio, uh, there'll be a higher percentage, in other words, that comes from Marcellus Shale. And that will, the, in, the radioactivity levels will then increase uh, as more, as a greater percentage comes from Marcellus Shale. Uh, so right now, citizen groups have taken background readings, uh, and I have no doubts that, that those levels will increase as the Marcellus Shale percentage increases. Yes, there's one, one I wanted to mention, which is, there's an, 
in this dialogue that go, is going on with the oil and gas industry, as opposed to the environmental movement, uh, there's an asymmetry that's happening here. The, the, the companies are extremely powerful, have a lot of money. I know from fighting the nuclear industry that that the oil and gas companies are far more powerful than the nuclear industry ever was. Uh, and what's happened is they've funded a whole bunch of websites and, you know, essentially what's happening is scientists on one side are fighting it out with public relations people in the industry uh, who are well-funded on the other side, that's the asymmetry I'm talking about. You have science people arguing with public relations flax. <laughs> the The message to the public is they they need to they need to identify where the sources of information get their money. Uh, you know, if they're funded by the oil and gas companies. Uh, they need to take that into account when they listen to uh, the arguments back and forth.